So good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, very much appreciate it. It's always nice to um, to see people here. Um, always wonder if anybody's going to come or not, but it, it's um, always humbling to see folks here. So let's jump right into this tonight. Um, one of the things that inspired tonight as a topic was... <clears throat> just comments I've been getting from a lot of folks, um, folks I work with individually in coaching, uh, folks um, seeing the comments in the room. Um, how many in here would kind of say right now that the market is um, a, an understatement to say it's challenging at the moment? And you're trying to figure out where your place is in the market, trying to figure out what comes next. And I just wanted to go back here and talk about some of those things that can help you make those decisions, those trade decisions that you make um, better to, to do a better job of making those decisions. And <clears throat> remembering that the market is always going to be a challenging place to um, make money, to make a living, because at any given day, at the end of every day, only half the people trading made money because half the people have to lose for someone to make for folks to make money in the market so it's just the way it is and unfortunately um, um, the market has become very very challenging here for a bit and I think it's good to go back and review some of the basics here so we're going to spend quite a bit of time on on this um, you need to find that person, JC. <laughs> well, hopefully I can help you be on the other side, to be that winning person in the market and talk a, a little bit about some of the things that um, a person should um, be thinking about in your preparation for the day and making some of those better decisions. As I watch the chat in the in the various rooms and see things being um, talked about, I hear a lot of folks <clears throat> working really hard to predict the market or asking someone to predict the market for them. Um, I constantly get asked, you know, to look at a chart. What's this chart going to do? Where's the index going here? Um, is this a good trade or not a good trade? And, you know, those are really things that um, you as the individual trader is, you should be the one controlling that decision. And I understand why people aren't there. They're gaining experience, they're learning, they're, they're paying their dues in the market. That's a normal thing for everyone to go through. But um, we, We've become a market that's very much all about gambling. It, it's and and we're we're encouraged to do that by all of the media out there, all of the hype they put out, all of the sales technique to get us to buy this or buy that, buy strategy, buy this, do this, do that. Um, really pushing people's emotions all over the place. And and I remember <clears throat> back in the day. Um, I would finish a day of trading and I would be almost completely exhausted, not physically, but just mentally worn out. Like I had just done battle all day long and I certainly wasn't gaining any ground in doing that battle. And so I started looking at the things I needed to do to take that stress off from my trading. And you guys see me do a lot of this in the morning market prep, <clears throat> but I think a lot of people misunderstand what that's for. The morning market prep, I do that. Uh, um, I've done it for years and years and years, long before I ever put it on YouTube. Okay. Because it's my method of preparing myself for the day. 
See, one of, <clears throat> show of hands in here, type a Y if you'd agree with this, that you are your worst enemy when it comes to the to trading. Not the market, not, it, we individually are our own worst enemy when it comes to trading the market. <clears throat> and that's because of emotion. We get all caught up in so many different things. In fact, there's sh so many shiny things around us. We're constantly turning our head to catch those shiny things, you know, uh, like the dog chasing a squirrel. They can't, they can't focus because all of these things are going on all at the same time. So some of the things that I do to prepare myself to be successful in the market so I can make better decisions are on this list. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to look at the market trends. And I even saw this happening today um, in the rooms this afternoon when we finally saw a little bit of bullish candles trying to pop up off the bottom, people trying to speculate and predict that this was it. Boy, here we're going to go up from here. And yet there really wasn't anything in the chart that suggested that was true. Okay, it was speculation. It's got to go up because I need it to go up. Okay, now something I did that was kind of silly years ago, but I'm, I've talked about it before. <clears throat> but I wanted to put it in this presentation here for tonight to talk about one of the first things I do, and you see it every morning in the morning market prep, is I look at the current market trends, the index trends. And when I'm doing that, I'm doing that, and I mention it in my every morning prep video, remove your bias and look at the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. Because this is all part of, of this process of me putting myself into the focus mode of the market. What's the current trend? What's the market looking like? We have everyone wanting the market to go up, and yet all four of our indexes are currently in a downtrend. Okay, now we may be ready for a relief rally, but a relief rally back to resistance does not make a bullish chart, right? A relief bout rally back to resistance sets up what kind of a trade, guys? A relief bout rally back to resistance can set up a short. Yeah, that's right, trader. <clears throat> and so one of the things I used to do is I would look at the market trends and I would say diamonds is bullish, spy is bearish, you know, whatever it is. And I would look at that and then I would make a decision. And that decision I had three post-it notes. One was green, one was yellow, one was red. Okay. And it, it sounds silly, but this is bullish, this is neutral, this is bearish. Okay. Now, if I had to review the market now, at the way the market closed today, which, which card do you think I would pick here? or the market indexes. All four indexes are in a downtrend. So when the market is in a downtrend, should I only be looking for long stocks to buy? No, as a matter of fact, what I should be doing is looking for short setups. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mura. I should be looking for short setups in downtrending indexes. Not spending all my time looking for something to buy on the long side. And so what I would do is I would place one of these and, and I would tape it right to my computer screen, right below the trade button on my trade platform. 
so that every time I went to make a trade, when I would get that knee-jerk reaction response, I got to hurry up and buy this long, I would look over there and I had to make the decision, okay, are you going to break your rules? Are you sure you want to break your rules? One of my rules is to trade with the direction of the market, not trade against the direction of the market. So when I'm making those trade decisions, I want to put that <clears throat> responsibility on myself to say, this may be a long setting up, but what is the resistance level in the chart? And is this actually a trade that's got much merit at all in a downtrending market? Do you guys agree with this? There's an old saying that rise, <clears throat> excuse me, rising tides lifts all ships, right? What ha what happens if the, if the tide's going out? All ships sink, right? They drop. So in a downtrending market, I need to be looking predominantly for short trades, or I need to be willing to stand aside. Okay, because trying to counter trend a downtrending market with the kind of energy that we've seen lately for the downside is really betting against or trying to swim against the stream. And even the best long trades may not perform well, if the trend is down. Is this making sense, guys? And <clears throat> if, you're, if your assessment when you look at those indexes is, well, it's neutral, okay? Then there may be both long side trades and short touch side trades that you can find in a market, but you also might wanna be thinking, well, if the market doesn't know what it wants to do, should I, am I smart enough to know what the market wants to do when it's showing me it doesn't want, know what it's supposed to do? Because that would mean I'm kind of trying to predict which way the market is going to go. In a neutral market, I want to have both long trades and both short trades. Okay. And in a bullish market, I don't want to be looking for down trades. I want to be looking for quality up trades. So that is the first step is do that market evaluation and determination of what the indexes are and how you should be approaching that market. And I can tell you guys, this saved me lots and lots of frustration over the years because I would I would come to the market in the morning and get all keyed up and hopped up on gaps. <clears throat> Show of hands, how many of you have been trapped in gap up morning markets because all of the energy, all of the flow, all of, all of the hype, earnings and this, and hey, we're popping and we're gapping. And first thing in the morning, you jump in on a trade and it reverses on you. See, we forget the direction of the market and we get caught up in the moment. And every one of us do this. It's something that we have to fight against every single day because we're all emotional beings. And so when that emotion comes up, we have to have a method of saying, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take a breath, what's happening in the trends? Okay. Because as we go through the morning with all the economic news, things that happened overnight, all of that stuff, we can get all wound up and we can, as soon as the market opens, and, I, and I've, I'm famous for this. Years ago, I was just, this was just me, is that, even though I would do work like this to prepare for the day, as soon as the market opened, threw it all out the door, chasing trades all day long, got to move, got to go, got to go faster and faster and faster and faster to find trades. Everything that's moving, I had to see it. And all that does is drive your emotion higher. You make mistakes. 
Okay. Not only do you need to understand the current trends, you need to evaluate where the support levels and the resistance levels are in the charts, in the index charts. Because if you look at most of the charts right now, today, in the index charts, we've got to come up a long ways just to get to the 50-day moving average levels in the charts. A long ways. And we all know what the blue ice failure pattern is, right? Where we can rally right back up to the 50 and then fail. It's a very, very common pattern in the market. Okay. <clears throat> now, unless you're an intraday trader, and if you are an intraday trader, well then trade your intraday charts because there's certainly intraday trends that occur prior to the daily swing charts showing us bullishness. Okay, so you can trade an intraday trend if that's, if that's what you do, but make sure you're checking out and honestly inspecting where's the support of this trade and where's the resistance of this trade. Because it's pretty difficult for me to get really excited when the Dow is down here and the 50 day is up here and rolling over and now I'm trying to speculate this is gonna rally up and in between here I have several major resistance levels. So it's pretty difficult for me to get too excited about picking up bullish signals in a market that's showing me all of those clues of weakness in the market. Okay. You also want to review the technical patterns. <clears throat> when we look at technical patterns in the chart, and you could you could put candlestick patterns and things like that. When you see a market like the Dow, that's just down, 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 really down, and then we got a little candle setting in here trying to decide, kind of spinning around. And we know we're oversold in the short term, but is there any technical pattern in here that says that is bullish, guys? Is there any candle pattern that says that is bullish? That that is a reason to be a buyer. And I got to say, other than gambling or prediction, there's nothing about a pattern like that that says we should be a buyer. Okay, so we have to think about those things and we have to temper that emotion in this evaluation of the charts during the during the day during the morning to prepare for the day how should i be thinking about the market today when the market opens should i just jump right in and start buying you've paid attention to the morning prep i keep saying yeah big potential we could have big point moves to the upside or the downside but don't rule out whipsaws Big gap ups in the morning are subject to whipsaws. We saw another one today. So be really, really careful of letting your emotion guide your trading. Look at the chart and the indexes themselves and say, should I really be getting too excited about this gap up this morning? This gap down this morning, should I be panicking? And usually the answer is no. Okay, we have to set that, set that straight in our heads before the market opens or we're subject to that emotion. Take a look at your indicator patterns. If we look at the Dow right now, we have our 50 day moving average flattening out in the chart. It's flattening out and rolling over. We have our eight exponential moving average down through the 50. The 34 EMA is down through the 50. When we look at those kind of patterns and our price is down here, we know as we rally back up, we can run into major resistance levels up here and find that failure. There's no technical pattern 
or indicator pattern that suggests that is bullish. Now, I know everyone's frustrated. We want the market to go up and, you know, I understand that. <clears throat> But when we allow that emotion to get us to jump on those trades, we put ourselves at risk. We make bad trade decisions. And I know I'm not the only one in here that's ever had a really good bullish market, made really good money for a period of time to the upside. And then when the market starts turning to the downside or the volatility gets really wild, I still want to trade with the same intensity. Don't tell me I can't do it. And then what's the result of that, guys? Everything I made in the upswing, that bullish market, everything I made, I give back in my PL. Because I'm not willing to recognize the condition. Market. So I know this isn't the sexiest topic, but I hope you guys are understanding my doing this is really trying to help people with this, with this impulse problem that everything every time we're looking at a trade you know the old saying if you have a hammer everything looks like a nail well i've got a brokerage account everything looks like a buy and because i see it it has to be a buy no it doesn't we have to control that emotion and that impulse and try to make sure we're making the best decision we can on a trade because it's really hard to recover big losses in trading. You've got to double the return to just to make up your losses and then grow your account. So we want to avoid those losses, but we're not, we're not trying to work on our impulse control in our trading. We're not putting ourselves into the right state of mind to go into battle in a market that is designed to take your money. Okay? Don't willingly give it up. We need to review the economic calendar. I can't even tell you how many times I get asked, is the FOMC today? When's the CPI number coming out? And that always tells me the person who's asking me that question, they turned on their computer about the time the market opened, they sat down and they think they're ready to trade. No, they're ready to be a contributor to the market. They're willingly making themselves a contributor to the market. Okay, now <clears throat> economic events have different impact on the market and sometimes uh, an economic event that should have a major impact on the market has no impact on the market. <clears throat> you can have something that would normally not be something you pay attention to suddenly have big impact on the market. And if you're not willing to see it or recognize it, recognizing it, you're just putting your head in the sand and pretending that you're ready to trade. Okay, because if you don't know these things are going to happen, it's going to come around behind you and slap you in the back of the head really hard sometime and take your money away. And it's going to laugh on the way by. Yeah, you weren't ready. Thanks for the money. Earnings calendars. There's no way you can know everything that's going to report. Okay. But it is important to know those big number events. Okay. You know, when JP Morgan reports, when Apple reports, knowing that and being prepared for that because they can impact the market. 
they can impact it dramatically. So how are you going to approach the day? What kind of stocks are you, are you holding? Will your holding in Apple be affected by a bad earnings report on Apple? Unfortunately, most people aren't paying attention to that. And they're surprised when they're in a trade in well, I'm going to pick on um, American Airlines, or I mean um, United Airlines here this afternoon. Amer uh, United reported in earnings and it shot up after the close. And all of those trades were in the downtrend. And hey, I'm trading American Airlines heading into this earnings of UAL, blissfully holding short, not even thinking about what's happening next. I get caught. So you need to be thinking about those things that's happening that in um, reports that could affect your current trades. And you need to know what these are because <clears throat> I know I'm not the only one here. How many of you guys have ever made a trade? You found this beautiful trade setup. Oh my gosh, it was pretty. You just couldn't wait. You jumped on the trade. And then you find out <clears throat> 10 minutes later, this reports earnings this afternoon. Or tomorrow how many of you have ever done that and you can get really hurt by that really hurt by that by not knowing and not paying attention now we're all gonna make mistakes from time to time <clears throat> but the best traders are always working to eliminate the mistakes before they occur Okay, make sure you're paying attention. Current events. Well, what kind of current events could be happening? Well, we know we could have major problems out of China at any time. Their real estate situation is collapsing. They're having our 2008 right now. They're having major problems. Impacts in China have an effect here in the United States. If all of a sudden something over in China really starts to crumble, trust me, all of the financial situations here in the United States will suffer. So we need to be, need to be taking a, at least a cursory look. What happened last night while we were sleeping? We need to look at the geopolitical events. We know geopolitically anything could occur right now. We could have something just get way better overnight, improve the market dramatically, or something get dramatically worse overnight, in fact, affecting everything we trade because of those geopolitical events. Okay. And then what about currency fluctuations? This is really big right now. We had really good earnings on several banks, big banks, and how has that performed in the market? Been crummy. In fact, the banks are moving down. And why is that? Because the dollar is getting so much stronger against other currencies, it's pushing those bond yields out wide. Our rates are going up. We've got uncertainty on inflation. And we wonder why the market's struggling. Well, it's a good earnings report. So nobody has confidence right now as the rates continue to go up. So I don't trade based on these things. And this is really important to make note of. I do not trade based on these things. I trade based on the chart. But by paying attention to these things and being prepared for these before the market opens, I'm prepared to trade for the day. Because I have a mindset of the things that could be a gotcha or catch I know if the market's gapping up big and yet we see the bond yields continue to expand up in the morning, watch for a whipsaw. Happened the last two days.
Bond yields going up, the market's trying to spike and getting everybody excited in the market to hurry up and buy something and then it just drops right back down because the bonds are causing a major problem in the market. Okay, and I didn't put it on here, but I want to cover this really quickly. One thing that I do that saves me a lot of time, and I have to do it because I'm, you know, teaching in the room and things like that, is that before the market opens, I review every every position that I'm in. Okay, I review my my the trade plan. I write down all of my trades. I review my trade plan in every position I'm in versus you know on the stock chart. And if I need to adjust stop losses, if I've got a stock gapping up big in the morning and I just want to close it out, I place that order before the market opens. Close it. I make all of my adjustments to current trades prior to the market opening. And the reason I do that, guys, is how many times has the market opened and there's things happening around you and possible trades happening around you, but you're still you're still stuck watching these because you're not prepared for the day. Trying to set orders, adjust stops, do kind of things when you should be looking for trade opportunities. It adds stress to your day. So by doing this, I can come into the market open, turn on the trading room, talk all morning, never even look at my charts. Never even look at my brokerage account because all of my orders are set. My job now is to look for new trades. Look for new dangers, look for new opportunities in the market. So I'd really like to encourage everyone to do some of that. Try to manage those trades so that it's out of the way. When the market opens, you're prepared to really be focused on the trading that's happening, the charts right now. Trading. Okay. Makes sense. <clears throat> Volatility. I had to put Spock in here and I thought that was kind of funny. My, my lame humor, but um, volatility that we've seen right now has been really challenging. Is there anyone here that says, no, nah, man, this volatility has just been awesome. I'm loving this volatility. It's where I make my money. Anybody loving the volatility that we're seeing right now? But here's the thing, guys. I don't care how good. Yeah, I've been doing this 30 years. I consider myself pretty competent as a chartist, as a, uh, as a technical analyst. Okay, pretty competent at it. But I don't care how many skills you have in technical analysis, the quality of the chart pattern that you see, or even the candlestick patterns. High implied volatility price movements diminish the odds of every winning trade that you, or every trade that you take when the market is volatile. Your odds of winning a trade, even the best analyst, can be duped or be suckered into trades that rip cash out of their accounts because they're not willing to stand aside when things are crazy wild. In fact, what we do when they're crazy wild, what do we do? The emotion ramps up on us because there's all of this activity and everything's going, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. And we're chasing and racing around. And what do we end up doing? We end up sometimes trading more in volatility like this when our odds of winning are less. One of my major mistakes for a long, long time in the market was yo-yoing my account. I, I would at periods of time I would make really good money and then I would have these big drawdowns in my account. And the reason was is because I wasn't willing to recognize the condition of the market had changed. And I was still trying to push as hard as I was in that bullish upside swing because I wasn't willing to slow down. Guys, there are periods of time in the market 
you know, like the old Kenny Rogers song, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. Remember, we're no good to our accounts as the CEO of our business and trading. We're no good to our accounts. If we don't recognize a market condition that has higher odds of taking our money away. Would you guys agree? Think about it. If you had hired somebody to do it and they were messing it up that bad during periods of time like that, you'd fire them. We need to recognize the change in market condition and be willing to be patient. Be willing to pause. I find it interesting that people show up for the market every day and they cannot wait to risk their hard earned money. They can't wait. And patiently looking for, I got to find a trade. I got to find a trade because I got up, I turned the computer on and I'm here this morning. I got to find a trade, even when the odds are set against me. Does that make, does that make any sense to you? And like I said here, it's not logical. Be willing to wait and be patient for a better period of time. Because when you don't have to make up drawdowns, guys, your account grows more smoothly. If you're constantly yo-yoing your account up and down during periods of time, particularly like this, now you've got to recover that, make that up just to get your account back on a growth path. Okay. Well, Kev, it's pretty easy to see in price action, right? I mean, when we gap up 300 points and then run up 350, 360 yesterday, and then reverse and end up down at 1.500 points, that's volatility. That's high risk trading. right? When we get these big price action swings and trades and we can't figure out, we're always trying to, we're asking someone else, we're asking Rick, we're asking me, or asking John, somebody, is this a good trade? Is this a, because we're not sure because the volatility is so high. Guys, if it's that tough to see that this is a good trade, it's probably not. Okay. It'd be better to calm down a little bit, really focus in on that chart and make that decision. Yeah, I can't take this. The risk is just too high here. Be willing to wait. Because when I'm patient and wait, I don't have to make up the losses. Okay. I have no problem in setting and waiting for good quality trades to set up because I know if I step into trades like this where the odds are against me, I'm gonna have to make up more losses. Okay, does that make sense? You guys getting that? You guys are being really quiet tonight. I know this isn't one of those presentations to get a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of things flowing, but hopefully you're feeling it. We have turned this market into a casino and everybody is predicting everything. It, it's remarkable to me how people will tell me, post it in the room, well, this is going up today. All right, you have, you have a crystal ball and can see into the future? Remember, technical analysis gives us measured clues, clues about price action and nothing more. There's no bullish engulfing candle that guarantees it's going to be up tomorrow. There's no head and shoulders pattern that guarantees that when you see it, this thing's going to take off and go to the upside.
Technical analysis only gives us those measured clues. It helps us improve our odds. But we have to measure that with some, uh, temper that with some logic. Just because I see it doesn't mean the rest of the market sees this or the rest of the market agrees with me on this. Okay. So when people ask me about trades, and I say this in right way options all the time, I don't know, this is going to win or lose. And I never do. I just know I've taken a trade that has odds in my favor. And I know I've made a mistake when I recognize that the odds are not in my favor. Okay. That's all I know. I have a good price pattern that pays off most of the time. And when I say most of the time, the 3-8 trap I trade, if I follow the rules of the 3-8 trap, has a 70-30 win-loss ratio. I know that. Okay. I know that when I chase a crossover trade, and my, the way I define a crossover trade is we've got an eight exponential here and the three crosses up and oh my gosh, there's a big bullish candle right there. I got to jump on it. I know that trade only wins 50% of the time. I know that. And those odds aren't good enough. I want better odds for a winning trade. So it gives me these measured clues that I have to stack up this research, or I have to stack up the price action, the candles, the direction of the market, the support, the resistance, the trend, to improve my odds so I can get closer to that winning 70% or better. Okay. And, and trust me, I don't care if it's Warren Buffett. I don't care if you like Jim Cramer. I don't care any of them that predict, any of them, anybody that tells you they know what's going to happen is only fooling you and themselves. If you buy in that they know what's going to happen in the future that nobody knows. And that goes for all of the analysts out there that tell you, oh, the S&P 500 is going to 5,000. They don't know that. They're trying to convince you it's going to go that way because that's where they want it to go. They don't know that. Okay. Think about how long the market has been trying to convince us, oh, we're going to get six rate cuts this year. Six rate cuts. Yeah, we're going to get... Nope. They were wrong. They've been predicting it for all, I mean, this whole year. Oh, it's going to be great. Nope. They can't see the future. I can't see the future. You can't see the future. So when you take a look at a trade, take a look at a trade that this is a measured idea that I think I've got enough odds in my favor that this should work. Enough repeatable odds this should work. And that's all I know whenever I take a trade. That's why every time I take a trade, first thing I do is plan where's my entry. This is where I'm getting in. This is where my stop is. Is the risk of that trade acceptable? And do I have an upside potential that makes me at least two times what I'm risking into the trade? Every time I take a trade. And you know, guys, um, maybe it's just I'm tired tonight or maybe I'm tired of people telling me I don't have time for that planning jazz. And yet they keep coming and asking questions, why am I not making money in the market? And they won't do the simple things.
they tell me I don't have time for that planning jazz. Man, it takes seconds for me to plan a trade like that. Don't tell me you don't have time for it. Don't lie to me and don't lie to yourself. You're just telling yourself, I don't want to do the work. Just tell me where the winning trade is so I never have to think and I can make money every time. That's not the way the market works. It's designed to take your money from you. What are you doing to prevent that from occurring? Don't be fooled by anyone that tells you they know what's happening next in the market because they do not know. Place your trades based on what the risk that you have in a trade, how much you can take, what you're willing to take, what you're trying to return in that trade. Know the risk before you enter and then manage that trade. You know, I talk about this all the time and I thought this was fun, funny, you know, you keep saying trading plan and people give me lip service. So yeah, I have a trading plan. Yep, have a trading plan. Yep, have a trading plan. But you ask them even the, the simplest questions and they don't have an answer to it. They don't have a trading plan. We all agreed here in the room that the worst enemy to ourselves in trading is you, right? I'm my worst enemy. It's my trading plan that protects me from me. It's the rules that I follow that protect me from making those knee-jerk reaction trades, like that silly little thing of putting a red sticker, you know, a red post-it note on my screen that says, uh, 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 think about this before you do this. Okay. It's the rules that I follow that protect me from me and prevent me from the emotions. It's a preparation I do for the day that puts me ahead of most people in the market. It doesn't put me ahead of the institutions. It just puts me ahead of most people in the market that just show up in the morning, turn on the computer, and hey, they got money to burn. Well, thankfully they do because that's the way I make money. But I don't want you guys to be that. Okay, so what are you doing to put yourself ahead of the, of the, ahead of the line? to give yourself an advantage. Trading plan is what does that. The rules that you follow. Trade planning, recording your trading activity, and post-trade evaluation. Guys, if you wanna know what's working in your trading and what's not working in your trading, how do I know that the crossover trade wins 50% of the time? Because for years and years and years, I have reviewed those trades and I can tell you for fact in my trading, a crossover trade wins 50% of the time. Okay, it may not be the same for you. You may have a different strategy and that's okay, but you've got to know doing a post trade evaluation. Because if you don't do that, and here's the, here's the truth, most people don't even record their trades. There's no way they can even go back and look and find the mistakes that they're making and improve their trading. Because they're not even trying. They're trading to be busy, they're trading for the excitement. I don't know what they're doing it for, but they're not trading to make money. Because no business runs without an evaluation of what's working and what's not. No business runs. Doesn't stick around very long unless you know what's working and what's not. Okay, so do those post-trade evaluations and find out what is working for you. Do more of what works and less of what isn't. Guys, trust me on this. You're going to learn more about your, yourself. You're going to learn more about your trading by doing those evaluations of those bad trades. And be honest when you do it. Don't just look at a chart and say, yep, when it did everything right. Nope, the market did it to me. Nope, that's not good enough.
I make a trade in a highly volatile market, whose fault is it? My fault. I can't pass that off on the excuse, well, the market was just volatile and got me. Nope. I made the decision to enter that trade. It's my responsibility. I did it. I have to own that. Okay. Um, you know, T, I think it's kind of funny. Um, I get that question all the time. Um, let me put it back to you this way. How many times have you been in a trade that gaps up in the morning and all you do is watch it all day? That thing gapped up. And by the time you take the profit, you take far less money than if you had just take it off first thing in the morning. Answer that question for me. How many times has that happened to you? A lot. <laughs> it happens a lot on big moves in the morning. And why is that? Because of the spike in implied volatility. Implied volatility pumps that premium clear up. 10, 15 minutes later, that implied volatility has fallen out and it will not be back up there. Maybe the rest of the day. Oftentimes, guys, if I've got a gap up open, I put an order in and I close that trade first thing in the morning, I get about the highest print of the day. Now, you can do some fancy stuff if you choose to on a trade to try and squeeze some more out if you have the time to do it. And I've done this before if I've just got time to sit and watch. It'll gap up and then I'll put a trailing stop. So I'll decide, give me 25 cents cushion in here, trailing stop, and as it moves up, and then it stops me out when it moves more than 25 cents to the downside. That's fine. But in option trades, often, guys, when we gap up big, we whipsaw back first, right? Before we go back up. And by then, we may have lost the implied volatility spike in the extrinsic value in the trade and it may not even if it rallies back up make back up there to that money that you had first thing in the morning okay now certainly there's slippage anytime you make a trade there's slippage when you when you do options there's slippage when you buy stocks there's a spread that you pay it's always going to be that way it's a cost of doing business but i find so many people worry about missing They'll, they'll worry about 10 or 15 cents of slippage that changed in a big gap. And they'll end up losing $2 worried about that 10, 15 cents of slippage. Okay. And if you have the time to watch T, that's fine. Um, for me, you know, I've got to be on the microphone immediately when the market opens. And I don't have time to do that, trying to manage the room. So I just put the order in and take it. And I can tell you, it very rarely is a bad thing when I just take the profit in the morning. Okay. But you trade the way you want to trade. And if you find, I, I don't know, I just see so many people, if they had just taken the profit first thing in the morning, they make more money. Okay. I remember when I learned that, I, I remember the day um, it had been uh, quite a while since I'd had a really good winning trade. And I remember I popped into a trade and I looked at it the next morning and that trade was up $350. So I was like, yes. Okay. 350 bucks. And at that time that was huge to me. So the market opens up and I'm racing around. I'm looking at other trades, feeling like a superhero. And I go back and look back at my trade 
and it's now $250 profit. How many of you guys have had that thing that happen? It only takes a few minutes. And then you sit there and stare at it all day. No, I want 350. I want 350. I want 350. You end up taking it off at 150 or even a loss, trying to get it back up there where it was at the open. The market was trying to give me money. I should have just taken it. You know, when you think about it, guys, when we're trading and we get involved in some of these conversations about that, the, the simple answer is you have a person out here in the market, okay? They're all stick people, by the way. And they've got a wad full of wad of cash and they're trying to hand it to you and you're saying, nope, 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 nope. Bit ass spread is 15 cents too wide. Nope, I, I don't want it. I don't want it. Market's trying to hand you money. You did your job as a trader. Take it. Because it may not offer it again. Yeah, that's exactly right, Biojohn. Okay. So when we look at charts, guys, and, and we're looking and, and evaluating these markets. I, I want you to, to take a look at this chart and I saw half a dozen people commenting that we're going to bounce. It's going to bounce tomorrow and they may be right. We, we're due a relief rally. But is there anything in here that says we should be a buyer other than speculation and gambling? Is there anything in the price action, anything in the price pattern, anything in the technicals that says this is a buy here. Only hope and emotion. Okay, that's gambling. If you want to gamble, save some money, go to Vegas because there they'll bring you drinks and when you lose all your money, they'll comp you a room and something to eat. The market will kick you on the way past. Okay. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to take my word for it, then just start moving down through a progression. You guys know I use the three eight trap. Anytime the three is below the eight, it's not a reason to be a buyer. Okay. Sorry, that's a two day chart. There we go. There's no nothing there. In fact, any rally like this, any pushback up where the three stays below the eight is the reason to short, not be a buyer. So if I move this down to a four hour chart, still not a buy. An hourly chart, it is still not a buy. How many times have we crossed over here, guys? Cross up and fail, cross up and fail. cross up and fail. Don't play that game. If this cross is up, fine, but that's not a reason to buy. I said the crossover trade only wins about 50% of the time. There's three in a row that were losers. On the hourly chart, don't play that game. Make the chart show you a higher low. Cross up and hold. Three stays above the eight, you have a trade. Instead of a 50% probability, a 70% probability. And that's on all time frames, guys. It doesn't matter if it's a weekly chart.
doesn't matter if it's a 15 minute chart it doesn't matter if it's a five minute chart crossover up fail 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 how many more examples do you need crossover up hold and you have a higher chance of winning so if you're just a daily swing trader we got some time to well wait here right we've got some time to wait for that to be bullish on a daily chart make sense SMCI, SMCI is another crossover trade. As a matter of fact, it's still in a downtrend. Crossover, fail. Okay. Break the downtrend, hold a higher low, then you've got a trade like right here crossover hold the higher low and now you have a trade with a higher probability of winning you see guys the way I trade them by the rules that I follow I'm very disciplined on the rules nowadays I wasn't in the beginning but I'm very disciplined on the rules because I know that if I just follow the rules I win I make more money I average about a 20% return in my account. I've done that every year except one in the last 20, and I was just slightly below 20%. Because I follow the rules, I only take trades with high probability. Now, you don't have to like the 3 trap, and I'm not saying that this is something you have to do. I'm saying whatever strategy it is that you trade, make sure you find out by doing a post-trade evaluation is what you believe to be right is it actually right is it actually making money for you or are you fooling yourself because you make just enough money enough times that you stay even or are you actually seeing a pattern that gives you better odds of winning does that make sense guys I don't care what strategy you use. If you if you put a gun to my head and said, I can't trade the three eight trap ever again the rest of my life, I have to trade this strategy, whatever that strategy may be, I'm gonna work really hard to figure out what the odds are, what pattern, what setup gives me the best results in trading. Because once I know that, that's all I have to do. And I also want you to know that this doesn't, what I do has nothing to do with predicting. That's why when people ask me, what's gonna happen here? I don't predict anything. The stock has to perform to the rules to be a trade. That's all. And I know that that has a probability of 70, 30. Okay, so I'm not predicting this is going to go up, particularly when it's in a downtrend. Now you do, I will tell you, you do have a support level here that could lead, um, you know, lead some credence to this might pop. Okay, it might pop, but it might also pop and then pull right back and fail. Remember, we're in a bearish market right now. So make that chart prove to you it's got the strength to go up before you put your hard-earned money on it. Does that make sense, guys? I know I'm asking that a lot because there's not much conversation here tonight, but I'm talking very plainly because I've seen so much pain here recently from traders because they're just unwilling. They just, it's just 
all emotion right now. Everybody's very emotional. They're, everybody's into gambling. And it was working. It was working great when the market was just running straight up and there was you can break all kinds of rules and make money. That's great. Thanks, guys. I'm glad some people are picking up some something out of this that makes sense. So when I look at Boyle, what do you see here in Boyle? Well, on my daily chart here, if you're looking at a daily chart, three is below the eight. It's even below the trend indicator. So by my chart, it's not a trade. Not a long trade yet. Could be, just not yet. And again, crossover up, fail, crossover up, fail. Okay. Oh, you're thinking short? If you're thinking short, you've got a better shot of this being short. Yes. Okay. This is a better shot of this being short at the moment. Now, how much short does it have left? Because it's so beaten down. Probably not much. It's not one, you know, when we're down here scraping along a bottom, I really don't want to short. I'd more I'd be more in favor of this finding its its footing and becoming bullish, but it's just not there yet. Okay. It might soon be. It's just not there yet. And I do have to remind myself, okay, I'm trying to go long. All four indexes are in downtrends. Okay. When you look at something like PSQ, okay. PSQ is a short ETF on the NASDAQ. Look right in here. This has got a better chance of being bullish right now. DOG. The short Dow. There's your long trade. There's your higher low. There. Uh, bio, yeah, BMY. I thought it was going to go up from here too. It really looked like it. You know, we got in to trade here. I made good money on the trade in here and I thought this was going to go higher from here every reason to believe at this point the way this is falling that we could break to a new low because there's nothing in this chart yet that says bullish okay and there's no short here either the short was up here. When we cross down, guys, for a short, cross down, wait for that rally back, and that three stays under the eight, and look for your short. It's always the same pattern. And when it comes to volatility, guys, take a look at Apple. Apple right now could be could be trying to set up a higher low. Maybe. Okay, but look at the risk in this trade. Because of the volatility of these moves. You know, 176 and back down here at 169. How many of you can really take that much risk on a trade? 
Here's the other thing I know is bottoms like this can be extremely volatile. We can get these big pops and failure, cross up and fail. All right. What we need to do is let that volatility spill out. And it always happens in tops and bottoms. When we, when we come up out of bottoms, the volatility, the big price wings, the big risk of every trade is here. It's at the tops and the bottoms, the big risk, the big volatility. That volatility gets lighter, lower risk trades right here, right here. Let the institutions make that decision where the bottom is, because the fact is they have to. They're the only ones with the money that can make that decision. For us to try and predict it here is kind of foolish until they've made that decision. So let them make the decision. Don't fight the volatility. Wait for the easier trade, the higher probability position. Okay. And, you know, I just have been repeating this over and over here today. Cross up, cross down. Chase the crossover, fail. Chase the crossover, fail. Chase the crossover, fail. Chase the crossover, fail. Why is this one any different? It's not until it puts in a higher low. It's not any different. Okay. There's no magic in the three and the eight, guys. You can put a four and a ten. You can put any two moving averages that have different time frames on them and see the same patterns. So don't place too much weight on just the three and the eight. It can be any two moving averages that does it. There's no magic in those. But for me, guys, this is what makes sense to me. And maybe this will help you understand um, this as well. If we cross over up with a big explosive move, but we don't have enough energy for that three to hold above the eight, it's a false move. The momentum fades right back down. If we have enough energy in that move where we get these good patterns like over here, we get those good strong patterns that come up and those higher lows get held the momentum, the three stays above the eight, I have momentum for the move. And that momentum continues as long as that continues. When we cross up and fail, there's no trade here. The trade is here. This is the higher probability win. And it's the same on every time frame you trade. Okay. Doesn't matter if you look at a weekly, a five minute, a 15 minute, an hourly, it doesn't matter. It's the same. It will always be the same because all it is is price action. And so if you want to improve your odds in trading, know what those odds are on the patterns that you trade. You don't have to like mine. I'm not telling you you have to. I'm telling you know what the odds are. And the only way you can do that is by following some rules and evaluating past trades to find out what's working and what's not. Okay. By price action, Kev. I've just been explaining price action coming up out of a bottom. It's when the institutions, especially on a big stock like Apple, the only way Apple moves is if institutions are buying it. It just takes so much money to do it. Okay, so the institutions make that decision. They make that decision when a downtrend or a pullback in the stock is over and the stock actually starts holding higher lows. Because this is a technical pattern. We learned 
the first thing we learned when we talked about the basics of fundamentals is the peak and valley pattern in the market. Okay. What a lot of people though get wrong is that first move up, they think this is trend. That's not trend. The trend begins here. The trend begins when they can prove to hold a higher low because there is no trend, right? If we just get wild volatility to push a stock up and then it can't hold and it pulls right back, there's no trend there except the downtrend that's still happening. So institutions show themselves when the downtrend breaks and a higher low occurs and it has enough momentum the three say stays above the eight, we just wait for the entry into the trade. And we can repeat that as long as that condition continues. Okay. But if we get involved in this, we're just going to get stopped out a lot, a lot more. Okay. So we have to be patient and wait for those signs that occurred that the, the bullish um, momentum is moving with that trade. And it's also the same for a short. If we look at this price pattern up here at the top, when we make this lower high right here, I'm going to call this kind of a double top. It's actually a little bit of a lower high. But that lower high here, notice the three stayed underneath the eight. From that point on, any trade, any time price rallied back up and stayed below the eight, that's an opportunity to short. So it's the same on the other side of the trade. Downside. And if we can avoid this emotion of chasing these trades up, off of those bottom points and predicting that we're going to go up from here, we can actually improve our win-loss ratio pretty dramatically and it, it's not that hard to do. Okay, Not that hard to do. Now I'm going to go over just one more thing here really quickly. When we see a chart that's just racing to the upside, okay, and we've been seeing a lot of that here lately where we're just racing to the upside and we get a little rest or pull back in here and it pops a buy signal now I want you guys to think about that when I draw a trend on here and show you that this stock likes to move off of this trend and it works really really well if that thing pops a buy signal here do you think my odds of winning this trade are greater or less less because far too many times that pop will come and we don't recognize that we're way away from trend there's no support anywhere near this and they'll pop that signal in there we'll jump on it and then it'll fade back into the trend stopping us out always recognize as I said before you know support resistance and trend always recognize where your trend is your odds will always be better of winning a trade if you're picking entries near a trend, near a support. You'll improve your odds. And, and by the, in the isn't that why we became technical analysts, guys? To improve our odds. And yet, we see these things over and over. We don't review our past trades. We, we repeat the same mistakes over and over because we want to think that Hey, if I see it, it's got to be a winning trade. Our account's proving us wrong, and we're getting frustrated by it, but we don't want to recognize our own mistakes. 
that are creating those problems. Okay, And I see a lot of those things happening in the market where we stretch big in a chart and then it finally pulls back just a little bit and we get real excited about it and we want to jump on the trade and we take a jump into that position and then it just goes into a protracted pullback. Remember, the, the more a stock stretches to the upside, just like in this stretch here, look how long it had to consolidate that. The more it stretches, the longer it consolidates or it goes through one of these protracted pullbacks. It's not terrible. We're just waiting for that pullback to end for the next run to the upside. Okay, because it may still hit the bigger long term trend. So always recognize where that trend is and try to avoid chasing those trades. because you get stopped out a lot. And one of the ways you can recognize them is like right here. Here's a great example of it, where we really stretch up here in the chart. We get this little pullback and this pops and people jump on that trade. They don't recognize that, well, I'm trying to trade a trend that's that steep. But because I saw that buy signal, it's gotta be long. And then it stops out. And all it did was come back and find out where the trend might be. And what this did is came back and found support. The trend was too steep, came back to support. and X, look how steep that is. Pop. Look at right here, big stretch, right here. Pop, protracted pullback until it makes its next higher low over here. And then it resumes the trend. So when you take these big steep runs, this can easily pull back. If we look, where, where's the current trend in here, guys? Is this the trend? This trend is too steep. No stock is going to sustain that for very long, just like right here. So you hop on that and you run the risk. Sometimes these will win. I'm not telling you they're always gonna lose. Sometimes these will win. But I would guess about 50% of the time, they find their way back to trend, just like we did here. Okay. You guys getting anything out of this? This price action stuff is so, it's so important to me. I spent so many, so much time studying charts and price action. It's just, it's so important to me. And if you're willing to recognize these situations and willing to recognize these patterns, you can improve your trading. And as a matter of fact, you don't have to, when you look at a trade, you will know this is either your trade or it's not your trade. You don't, you won't need anybody else's confirmation that this is a trade. Okay. So look at those charts and look at those patterns and know that when we get these big stretches, it happens so much anymore. It's almost like the institutions have it figured out and the CTAs, the, the computers that trade for the institutions have it figured out and they've got a, uh, an algorithm that will pop a trade in there just to get enough people to jump on it that they can short into them and take the money out of their account because it happens a lot anymore okay and then 
when you're looking at long trades, again, I want you to put that, make that decision. You can have a different decision than me. What's the current market condition when you look at the indexes? Should I be only looking for long trades in this market? Diamonds is in a downtrend. It's oversold, it needs a bounce. That doesn't mean it's bullish. Spy is in a downtrend. It's oversold, it needs a bounce. Doesn't mean it's bullish. QQQ is in a downtrend. It's oversold in the short term. It needs a, a bounce, but it doesn't mean it's bullish. And IWM is in a downtrend. It's oversold. It needs a bounce. It doesn't mean it's bullish. Okay? Because if the, if the, tr if the th same thing is true, what I just told you, when the three crosses down through the eight, and we rally back here and the three stays underneath the eight and we show failure, that's a short at the downtrend. Okay. That's how a short trade sets up. So don't be fooled by the relief rally, and it's truly a relief rally. I'm doing the little quote marks here. You can't see it, but it's a relief rally. It doesn't mean bullish trend. Treat it as a relief rally. Don't chase in. If you're intraday trade, go to a short-term chart and intraday tra trade the swing back up to the downtrend but by the time you get up there be watching for that possibility that we could roll over okay and if you look at our shorter term charts guys that's all we've been doing this has been whipping like crazy here in the queues 15 minute charts just been clearly downtrending okay diamonds short term clearly downtrending we haven't started an uptrend yet even on the short term chart Okay, so wait for those things to occur to improve your winning results in a trade. And guys, um, you know, for those of you who are here that this was meant for, and, and, and it's meant for the people that actually hear it today, because I know I would listen to stuff early on, and I just didn't want to hear it. Don't tell me that I'm... What I'm doing is my account's proving me it's not working, but don't tell me I'm wrong. But for those that are here that are willing to hear this, and you're willing to see this, you can change your trading life. It doesn't have to be this struggle. It doesn't have to be this battle every day. Figure out what strategy it is you want to trade, find out the odds of the trades, and be that trader. And that's all you need to do. You don't have to know every pattern in the market. You don't have to be even great at anything except one thing in the market that repeats itself over and over. And you can make all the money you want in the market. If you're a swing trader, you know, I don't care. You can swing trade any chart, Kev. Um, I swing trade weekly charts. Because what are we talking about here? It's the same pattern over and over. Okay, I'm waiting for one in PayPal on a weekly chart right now. I'm waiting for a buy signal to occur. Big downtrend break. I can swing trade a weekly chart just the same way I can swing trade a five minute chart or a daily chart. If you're asking me which one's the best trade for swing tra or t 
time frame, that's up to you. It comes down to how much time do you want to spend. The shorter time frame you go, the more time you're going to be in front of the screens. The shorter time frame, you're going to see much more volatility. You have to make instantaneous decisions. You have to know exactly what your trade is right off the bat on intraday trading. If you slow it down to daily charts, it doesn't take quite as much time. Okay. But you have to be patient. I, you can look at lower time frames. I don't. When it comes to stocks, guys, I trade a daily chart and I trade a weekly chart. That's all I trade. If I have the desire to intraday trade, I trade one chart, one chart only, and that's futures. Dow Jones futures, I trade this and this only. It's the only thing I intraday trade. I don't trade any stocks intraday. I made a decision... And that's my my decision. You, don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be you. I don't intraday trade stocks because I don't like doing it. I hate it. Okay, you can love it. That's fine if you got the temperament and you enjoy it, and that's fine. But whatever stock that or whatever time frame you choose to trade, then trade that chart. Because if I go to a 15 minute chart, there's going to be swing trades in here to trade. Okay, longs and shorts. If I go to a five minute chart, same thing's going to occur. It doesn't matter. Time is fractal. There's a beautiful short right there. Beautiful short. Right there. There's the entry. Stop there. Winning trade. Here's a long the higher low holds three stays up there there's your winning trade you can swing trade any time frame you want the important thing is to figure out your chart and then trade that chart no I do not look at lower time frames if I'm if I trade daily charts and weekly charts I do not look at lower charts for trade decisions um, I tried that for a long time. Um, how many of, how many of you have tried multiple time frame analysis and find out that all you end up with is you end up with a bunch of confusion, you end up with a bunch of contradictions, you end up missing a lot of good trades because you're trying to to outsmart the market is what you're trying to do. Just pick a time frame and trade it. Okay. So if it's an hourly chart that brings you to a trade, then trade the hourly chart. If that's the time frame that you like to trade, there's, there's a beautiful short right there. There's a long right here. There's a short right here, short right here. There's a beautiful long right there. Okay, pick a time frame and trade it. Now I will tell you if you trade, if you choose to be a daily swing trader, what that means is when we look at a market like this, we gotta wait, right? We gotta be patient. That is not a bullish pattern. This is a bullish pattern. So we have to wait for this whole thing to cross up and prove to hold. Now we've got trades. If we choose to trade a daily chart, we've got to wait for this to occur here. Does that make sense, Kev? If you're not patient to wait for this trade and you choose to go to a lower time frame chart, fine, but then trade that chart. If 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 you don't mind, if, if 
you know, looking at a 10 minute chart or a five minute chart just to find a trade because you, you just got a trade, then follow the same rules and wait for that pattern to set up in the short time frame chart, but then trade that chart. Trade that chart for the entry and the exit and get out of the way. Intraday trades are meant as intraday trades. Get out of the way. Okay, and wait for the next trade. And let me say this, guys, once I, once I started to do this, once I finally heard and the message finally reached me, everything changed for me and um, I enjoyed my trading more because I wasn't trying to predict the market. I wasn't trying to fight the market. I wasn't trying to prove to the market I knew more than the market knew. All I did is wait for the pattern to set up. I paid attention to the direction of the market. So if the market's bearish, I want to be looking for bearish trades. I certainly don't want to be chasing a whole bunch of longs. I want to listen to the market condition and trade with the direction of the market. And I want to wait for my patterns to develop in the chart before I make that decision on a trade. And that is really important. I have to be patient and wait. Because when I wait, I get better trades. I make better decisions, which was the topic of tonight. Make better decisions on your trades. There you go. Beautiful. Crap short. And I don't want to fight the market. I, honestly, I hope the market never knows my name. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is did my account grow? It's not going to matter. The market doesn't care if I make money or lose money. It doesn't care. There's no gold watch. There's no hero stuff. Did your account grow or not? Patience and discipline to follow rules, Kev, are, are really critical. And you learn those over time by practice and review, reviewing your past trades. Okay? You review your past trades and find out what's working and what's not. And then just refine yourself to this is what I do, this is who I am. And I just repeat the same thing over and over and over. And you know the cool thing is, guys, you only need to be really good at one thing in the market, one pattern, one setup. And you can make all the money in the all the money you'd ever want to make. You don't have to master everything. In fact, you're wasting your time trying to master everything. Just be really good at one thing. I do, I, there's two patterns I trade, you guys know it has to be in a trend. It's either a pullback, buyer step up, or it's a consolidation op over and it's a pullback op or pop out of the box opportunity. Those are the two patterns I trade. I've made my career doing that, just following a trend. The three has to stay above the eight in the trend. I want this trade to be close to the trend and close to support. By doing those things, I improve my odds, and it's the only reason. There's nothing special about me. But I produce 20% returns 20 years straight. Why? Because I follow rules, and I'm disciplined to the rules. Not because of me. Because I learned what works and what doesn't, and I just do what works, and less of what doesn't. Okay, and you don't have to like these patterns. Find a pattern that you see very, very easily and then just work to exploit it. Be the best at that pattern you can be. That's all you need to do.
but always trying to predict and fight the direction of the market and tell the market it's got to go up from here. It's sold off too much. It has to go up. No, it doesn't. Market doesn't care what you think. Doesn't care what I think. All we can count on is price action when it moves. Make sure you're prepared for your day. You know what you're supposed to be doing here. You're not trying to be all long tomorrow morning on a gap up when the downtrend when all the trends are down. Okay. Um, see, TSM was kind of starting to set something up and then it fell apart. Um, so many stocks have fallen. Here's a pop out of the box short setting up in AXP. Cross down, we're consolidating over. You'd set a price alert here, wait for the failure. Here's a pop out of the box up, consolidates over. It's away from trend, so this trade didn't have great odds because we're away from trend. I would much prefer this pattern here, closer into the Trendinator than this one. Higher risk trade here than this one. Okay, Qualcomm has been chopping around here and it's just, it's not working. And you can see TEVA, it finally failed here. So the down, a lot of things being drawn down here in the market. So. Good bullish patterns are kind of hard to find. Yeah, guys, I need to cut this off. Um, I didn't intend to be here this long. You saw I only just had a few slides, but... Guys, take this information for what you want it to be. I hope some of you heard it tonight, and I hope someone can, can incorporate this into your trading and really start to do something in your trading. Knock that chip off your shoulder. We don't know what's happening tomorrow. We cannot see the future and stop thinking you can. Plan your trades carefully. Look at that market condition. Know what you're supposed to do when the day opens and be prepared for your trading day. Right? And you do those things. You'll make a lot more money in the market and you will enjoy it a lot more. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a great evening. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.